And when volatility gets this high, this elevated, which does happen from time to time, I mean, the VIX was touching 30s last year as well, you have to understand that at some point, it's going to have to fade. Because the best way to think about it is that when volatility is elevated, the S&P 500 has a strong burden of proof to prove to the volatility market that it's justified for volatility to be this high. If it's not continuously proving it day in and day out, then there's volatility would have to drop, right? If, if volatility is pricing in massive movements in the stock market, and it's just not quite happening. I mean, the fear is there. I feel it as well. Every day I log in, I think it's going to be limit down today for sure. Something terrible happened in Ukraine and it's going to be limit down. But it just isn't. Every day we kind of, it's it's not been good, but nothing has really broken yet. I mean, what's the worst daily movement? It hasn't really even been that bad. So the S&P 500, equities markets, always have that extended burden of proof through one of these cycles. And the longer it goes without actually justifying the high vol, you're going to start to have that correlation break down. Those strong minus four beta factor, minus five for the VIX, they're going to start breaking down and you should expect volatility to decline. But uh, the VIX index, it's very simple. It basically represents the market's expectation for forward one-year movement. And something that confuses a lot of people is you often hear the VIX being talked about, it's a forward one-month volatility. That is true, it is. It's based on S&P 500 options, and they do use a strip of 30-day out of the money, in the money, a full strip of those options to calculate the VIX value but then it is an annualized number. So that's the part that actually confuses people because when you see the VIX value, let's say the VIX is 30 today. I think it's 29 or something, but 30. This isn't $30, it's actually 30%. And what it means very simply is that the market is predicting that the S&P 500 will move 30% in the next year. And it's plus or minus. A lot of people think that that inverse correlation has to hold. It's also plus, right? It's just volatility. It doesn't specifically say it has to be down. That's what a 30 VIX means. It just means that the market is expecting a 30% move. So when you see that value of the VIX, it is a percentage. It is just the market's one standard deviation expectation. And that is all based on S&P 500 options market. So because it's an annualized number, it's actually really easy to calculate different timeframes. So if you wanted to know how much the market is pricing that one month timeframe, remember the VIX is 30 day option strip, but it's an annualized number. All you have to do is divide by the square root of 12 because there's 12 months in a year, which the square root of 12 is 3.46. And the 30 VIX is implying an S&P 500 move of plus or minus 8.67% over the next one month. Now, if you want to see why volatility is declining, this is why. This is the rolling one-month performance of the S&P 500. And right there with that red line is 8.67. That's the number we just calculated there. A 30 VIX is implying that the S&P 500 is going to be moving this much on a monthly basis. You can see how rare that actually happens. So there's a big burden of proof right now with the VIX to stay at 30 the S&P 500 better start moving quick and it better start moving a lot day to day, a whole lot more than it has been. We'll get into that you know, as, as we go further down here, but we can also do it weekly. So there's 52 weeks in a year. You can take that 30 VIX, divide by the square root of 52, which is 7.21, and you get an implied move of 4.16%, plus or minus, don't ever forget that, it might be plus, over the next one week. So how often does that happen? Well, that happens here. It's actually quite rare. Again, the S&P 500 doesn't actually move on a weekly basis more than 4. Point, what did we say? 4.16% very often. Obviously, during crisis, you can see that the highest move, it spiked upwards in November 2008, very high for one week and down 18% in another week in October in 2008. But again, in order for the volatility to be justified at these really high levels, the S&P better start moving pretty quick. And I think this is the one that's probably most useful for people is the daily. So there's 252 trading days in the year. The VIX is a calendar calculation, but there's 252 trading days. You just simply divide the VIX index, the 30 that we are assuming it is today, 
divide by the square root of 252, which is 15.87. And we have an implied daily move, plus or minus 1.89%, basically 2% per day. And the S&P 500 is not moving 2% per day. It's not moving even close to that. It feels like it should be. And there's definitely crisis in the air. I mean, like I said, I'm expecting something terrible every morning or one of those limit up days. You know, if you get one of these great news headlines where it seems like they've resolved the conflict and everybody's, you know, excited about the future, you might get a four or five up day and that would count as volatility, remember plus or minus, but we've just not seen it. So of course, volatility has to go down. Again, it's not justified at these levels. So if you want a quick little cheat sheet, you can come back to this live stream in the future. So you can see the VIX values here and you can input your own. I basically showed you how to do this yourself, but this is what the VIX is implying for a one month move. Remember divide by the square root of 12, one week divide by the square root of uh, 52 and one day divide by 252 representing trading days only. This is it. You can just basically calculate how much the VIX index is implying the S&P should be moving. And if it's not moving this much, you can bet that that correlation is going to break down. There's no reason why the VIX index should stay at 30 if the S&P is not moving 1.89 sort of on average a day. So up or down 1%, up or down 3 the next day, 2 the next day. We're just not seeing that. for a while there, but you know, it's it's been stable. And the longer this goes, I mean, it's the S&P is down 0.4% today. That's not enough. We're going to have, I mean, the VIX is going to have to go down if all the S&P can muster is down 0.4%. So that's essentially what's happening. That is why basically a lot of broken dreams this week when people are kind of waiting on the sidelines for that time to strike the UVXY or get those VIX calls and have it go back to 80. It's not going to go to 80 unless it's actually justified to go to 80.